Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Well, welcome to this platform, Acknowledges Project 365, where we share hope, encouragement, and inspiration to individuals across the whole wide world. I am Portia Wheatley. I am the founder and the president of a nonprofit or and organization acknowledged as Trophy of Life Incorporated, where again, we have the opportunity to render hope and encouragement and inspiration to individuals across the whole wide world. And we are so grateful about it because it's helping people across the world, people we know and people that we do not know, but the message is getting out and we are a part of that assignment and we're grateful. Let me bring in my co-host, Hello everyone, I am Takara Swan and I'm so happy to be here with you today. We have a phenomenal guest today, but before we get started, I just want to remind all of you to go to our YouTube page, like, share, subscribe so that you can be a part of our team and help spread hope, encouragement, and inspiration across the entire world. Across the entire world. That's so amazing to me, but I, I serve an amazing God and we're grateful for that. Well, today we have as our guest, Bishop Teresa Hicks. She is one phenomenal woman of God and we are grateful to God to have her today. She's one of those women that uh, tells it like it is. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it because we're human and we're spiritual beings, of course. But we like to uh, entertain people, engage with people, <laughs> love on people, all of that. So um, God be praised for all of that. Well, today our topic is pastors who pastor their spouse. And I know you're going, mm. <laughs> pastors who pastor their spouse, as well as being a wife and a senior pastor. Whew. That's a whole lot right there. But she's going to share with us that experience. And our focus is that exact thing. Pastors who pastor their spouse, as well as being a wife and being a senior pastor. And I know without a doubt that we're, uh, she's going to help. She's going to encourage. She's going to render hope and be um, an inspiration to those individuals who may be dealing with that issue or uh, walking in that position. And we're, say, we're saying, Teresha, now there's a Teresha and there's a Teresa. Today we have Teresa Hicks and she's going to share with us. And uh, Bishop, please excuse me. There is no disrespect if I happen oh. to call you Teresa. No, All right? no. I, right know, no. I know that's right. <laughs> well, you have the platform. God bless you. And come on and let's share. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Portia. God bless you, Takira. Amen. I pray, pray God's rich blessings on you on this platform that you are allowing to come forward so that people can, can learn and be encouraged. I pray that you will begin to experience the Rehoboth of God for your faithfulness, for your faithfulness. So let's talk about myself. I was saved at the age of 14 in the Church of God in Christ. So I'm, I'm a Koji child. Um, I've been married to my husband in August will be 31 years that we've been married. I have a wonderful husband. Um, and during this time, I've served in various ministerial positions. So I've been in ministry for a long time. Um, one of my positions that I really loved was when I served as an assistant pastor. Um, when, and during this time of a serving as an assistant pastor, it's when the Lord began to deal with me about planting a ministry, about launching a church. And I wouldn't tell anyone that because I didn't want to do it. Number one, I didn't, who wants the pastor? And a woman, please, really? I didn't want to do it, so I wouldn't share it with anyone. And then the Lord, he sent confirmation because at that time I was working for the Ministry of Caring, which in Delaware is a Catholic nonprofit organization. So I was an executive secretary. And it was through that ministry that I learned that God does speak to nuns. I'm telling you. I was minding my own business. No one knew that God called me. He sent a nun into my office. My church knows this story. And she stood in my office in her Costa Rican voice. And she said, Jesus told me to tell you that you are going to pastor. And I just turned my head because I'm like, my upbringing said, he don't talk to y'all. 
But, he, you know, but she, you know, and so it confirmed. And I just looked at her and I turned my head and she said, you don't believe? And she gave me a plaque that had the scripture that says, I have not forgotten you. I've written you in the palm of my hand. So I said, okay, I had to accept the fact that I'm called to pastor. So I needed to set up a meeting with the senior pastor because by then I had been praying and I knew that, okay, October of that year would be the year that I would launch the ministry. So I had to sit down meeting with the senior pastor. And in that sit down meeting, you know, I discussed, you know, cause I want to make sure things are in place because I didn't want to leave that church hanging. Didn't want to leave that church hanging. Well, long story short, within a month of that, um, it's that conversation, my husband and I got put out of the church. I got put out. Yep. I got put out of the church on a Sunday morning. I was put out of, out of the church. Um, that was a terrible experience to go through. And during that time I had begun con 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 um, connecting with Archbishop Dennis. Um, and as he began to minister to me and to kind of help me because I was devastated, I was hurt by it. And he said to me that sometimes God will allow the eagle's nest to overturn to cause the eagle to fly. And then he also said that God will permanently close doors so that you cannot go back to that. And that was so true because during the time when ministry really got hard, I would have gone back to what was familiar to me, even though that was out of the will of God. So I established a ministry with a broken heart. I had a broken heart establishing a ministry to the point that when my husband and I, we were driving to the first service, we were at a community center. I was crying and I said, I can't do this. I can't do this. And he grabbed my hand and he said, just give it 30 days. Get, but he said, it's smart. I tell my church, I said, my husband got smart. He said, T, just give it 30 days, give it 30 days. And I'm like, okay, okay. I'm gonna give it 30 days. And that's it. 30 days, 30 days. But my true identity crisis came when I became a senior pastor. That's when I really experienced my identity crisis. It put me in a position ahead of my husband when I prefer to be behind him. I prefer that. Now my husband, Nars, he has always been in management positions. He's always been in senior management positions at work. So the issue was never him. It was never him. He it was he had never ever been intimidated by me, but I felt abandoned. I felt rejected. I felt not accepted, not accepted even by female pastors. I just was not accepted. Um, and I used to tell my husband, I used to tell him, I said, people love you, but they tolerate me. They love you, but they just tolerate me. He said, well, I don't know what to do about it. You know, so my first three years in the ministry were a nightmare. They were a nightmare. I felt like quitting. There was public humiliation that my husband stood by my side and watched me endure public humiliation. I remember um, at my father's funeral because of the feud of my family, I couldn't sit with my family. I was dogged. I had my head down. And I remember my husband said, you hold your head up. Hold your head up. You have nothing to be ashamed of. But I felt like quitting. I said, I cannot do this. And then the Lord would have it that Bishop Dennis, Archbishop, would be preaching in Delaware. Now, this is a funny story. You got to have Linda tell this story. It's a funny story. He was preaching in Delaware at this church. Pastor's name was Pernell. So my husband and I went and there I was cute sitting next to my husband. Because when you're a female senior pastor, you don't get the opportunity to sit next to your husband in church. So I'm sitting next to him all cute like I was on a date at the movies like we was on a date right and bishop dennis was preaching and the first time he said don't quit he was preaching good i said hey man i can't quit god i can't quit then the second time he tuned up don't quit don't quit by the third time bishop said don't quit fire went through y'all this was so embarrassing fire went through me you gotta have linda tell him i tore the whole cleared the whole front row of the church out linda said linda said they said Zoop. and my, I danced, I talk, and it wasn't that cute Kojic freedom shout. You know, we got a cute shout and then we got a freedom shout. Amen. It was a breakthrough where the power of God hit me. I remember my hair was swinging back and forth. It wrapped around my ear. Portia, so you know that was ugly. You know that was the ugly shout, right? That was the ugly shout. Wasn't nothing cute about that. I was so embarrassed. But anyway, so I realized after that, okay, I can't quit. So this was going to bless people. So, but I need to come up with another plan. 
to how can I make people like me? How can I make them accept the ministry? I got it. I started seeing Facebook flyers with husband and wives, pastor and co-pastor, lovey-dovey. I started seeing all of that. And I'm like, maybe if I do that, if I put my husband there, then maybe people will like me. Maybe they will appreciate me and I won't feel so abandoned. But the Lord had it so that I had two encounters with female bishops. The first one, we, I gave her a ride to service and we were just talking and I was telling about what I wanted to do and her words to me were three words, don't do it. Her response, don't do it, don't do it. And I said, oh, okay, okay. And then the second time when it happened, we were at leadership at a in the father, the son's daughter summit with, with Bishop Dennis. And so happened the conversation came up and another female bishop talked about, I, I, I guess she was struggling with the same thing that I was struggling with years ago. And she said how she made the mistake and put her husband as her assistant or co-pastor and it destroyed her marriage. It destroyed her marriage because it was not the plan of God. And, and, and my word of encouragement to, to women is this, female um, pastors, even though my husband looks the part, when you look at my husband, my husband looks like a pastor. He really does. I said, you really do look like a pastor. And I do look like the pastor's wife. I really do. Um, even though my husband looks the part, I'm the part. I'm the part. So. And one thing that you must understand through all of this, not one time did my husband ever say that he wanted to pastor, co-pastor. Not one time did he ever say it. People tried to put it in his head and in his ear, but I appreciate his strength to ignore them. He ignored them. And, 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 and during the process, of trying to find me in ministry, I still had to remember that I'm a wife. I still had to remember that, that I am a wife. And just like there is in, 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 in the United States, there's a separation of church and state. I had to learn to separate church from home. Many burdens I had to carry alone many burdens I had to carry alone and sometimes still do. My husband is used to a lot. He's used to me not sleeping at night. He's, he's accustomed to it now. Um, and But there was a brief period of time to be transparent when my husband struggled with where God was taking me. And we talked about it candidly. Um, he took I had to make sure that I wasn't neglecting him in any way. I had to make sure of that. Um, he knew that God would send me internationally. He knew that doors would open for me. He knew that. But then when it began to happen, it kind of shook him a little bit. So we had to talk about it. And he wasn't jealous of me, not intimidated. I think he kind of felt left out and alone. Um, so we had to work through that stage. We worked through that. And as a matter of fact, my first trip to Nigeria, my husband went and I was so glad he went, Lord Jesus, amen. And my first trip to Spain, my husband went also. But the other trips, my husband sent me. He sent me on these trips. And one thing, if for any reason that my husband felt would have felt any apprehension about me going international to any of the trips I honored him enough that I would not go I would not go um I would have stayed home in obedience because perhaps the Lord has showed him something that I didn't know and so I want to encourage female pastors who pastor their husbands. I'm not talking about y'all who pastor your boyfriend, your boo thing, or your man. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those who pastor their husbands. Don't try to make him what 
he is not for the sake of an image. For the sake of an image. So many times we look at those pictures on Facebook, we look at that and it looks so good and we want that image, but you don't know, I call them Facebook flyer lives. They're flyer lives. Because a lot of times those very pictures that you see, it could be the husband beating the wife and the wife beating the husband. You don't know, their homes could be falling apart. But then for the sake of trying to project an image, they circulate a lie. So don't try to make him what he is not. Don't do it. Amen. My husband calls me pastor. He calls me bishop. It's so funny to hear him say that. But he does. He calls me pastor and he calls me bishop. But when I'm home, I'm his wife. I'm Norris wife. He's anointed by God to be my husband. Amen. Amen. He's anointed to be my husband and my greatest support. My greatest support. He is an elder of my church. He's the, one of the first elders I ordained. He handles the business of the church. I don't have to worry about anything. Certain things, I just don't have to worry about it. My husband takes care of all of that. Amen. But we have the understanding that I'm the head of the church, but he's the head of the home. And as the head of the home, it's my responsibility as pastor to respect the order of God that my husband is the head of the house. And it is my responsibility, though I am called to minister, though all the elevations that I may have, whatever, my assignment is to reverence and to honor my husband. I respect him in public. There have been times y'all know we was hot. Fired up. You know we had an argument come to church, but they never knew it. You know we had an argument. Come on, please. Come on, saints. We argue. But the people never knew it because I, I, I respect him. I call him the bishop of my house. I respect him. I respect him in how I carry myself, how I present myself. You never see me crazy in the street. I have to represent my husband. Out of all the elevations that God has blessed me with, my greatest joy is being Mrs. Norris Edward Hicks Jr. Amen. And I want to encourage you, saints of God, female pastors, hold on. Hang in there. Don't give up. Don't give up. Properly position yourself at the altar because he that had begun a good work in you We'll perform it. God is going to complete what he said. No, let me stop because I feel the preacher. <laughs> I got to stop because I feel the preacher coming. And God will bless you. If you do what you need to do privately, God will bless you publicly. And many will rise and call you blessed. And they'll begin to say, I want a spouse like yours. I want to be like you. How can I be like you? Amen. And the best way to be like me is on your knees in prayer asking God for direction. I'm done. Oh my God, that is wonderful. That, now that's a message. Now mm -hmm. some may say, well, why did you put this on Project 365 about the church? It is not necessarily about the church per se. It is about the human part of you. Mm -hmm. You see now we have to pray for our pastors. Mm -hmm. Definitely pray for our pastors. Let the world see they're human too but mm -hmm. what do they do they go to god for situations that need to be handled um mm -hmm. emotions that need to be handled or uh, problems that need to be handled all of that which pertains to being the pastor of your spouse mm -hmm. and you it, it's amazing when you really honor your man of god oh yeah it's going to be good he loves that i mean not mm -hmm. in a arrogant or um, yeah. a proud way but but then again a piece of pride because that's my wife mm -hmm. at least you know and he knows that though she's in a pulpit she when she's home she's my wife i'm Teresa. he calls me t i'm t at home i tell you that that is wonderful one of the other let me see what did i say uh wrote down a couple of notes Honor, honoring your husband because he's a covering. Mm -hmm. He's your covering. 
You're in the pulpit, yes, but he's also you're covering at the house mm-hmm. in your home. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then those the uh Facebook posts of the uh husbands and wives that look beautiful. They look beautiful. However, behind closed doors, you don't know what's going on. You don't know the story. So you can you cannot honor your pastor more than you honor your husband. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So um, uh, even in um, as a woman, being the pastor of your spouse, you have to place the honor where honor is due. Mm-hmm. Place the respect where respect is due. Mm-hmm. Don't that's like you said. Don't go home and <laughs> that's not your pulpit. Right. You better act like your wife. Otherwise, somebody else gonna do what they they'll do it. It for is you. what it is. I do truth. I mm-hmm. do truth. Mm-hmm. Yes, but w- the husband and the wife, our focus is pleasing God. But mm-hmm. when you please God, you definitely will please your husband and or your wife. You, it, that's just the way it goes. I had another note. Wait a minute. I got to uh, uh, understand my own handwriting. <laughs> Wait a I don't understand what I wrote down. Not our. Oh, I said I w- wanted to make sure our audience knows that we're not stating this information or Pastor Hicks is not sharing this information to air um, dirty laundry about the church. Not at all. This platform is always going to be about encouraging hope Mm -hmm. and uh, inspiring. So those ladies, those men who may have your spouse as your pastor, being as she stated, be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Definitely be encouraged. Some things are going to go on. Yes. And and I can imagine, don't throw that, um, oh, you're the senior pastor in an argument. Oh, you, you acted like that, but it does happen. However, when we, again, put our focus, I'm, look, you know, again, when we put our focus on pleasing God, he calms mm-hmm. that thing down. Mm-hmm. He calms it down so that mm-hmm. um, the world, don't, not just the world, the public, I mean, not even if you were a, a pastor, but just in general, a husband and wife. Let's take the pastor off the table for a moment. Just a husband and wife. It's just something about a husband and wife disrespecting each other in public. Mm. It just makes me cringe. Mm, yeah. It just makes yeah. me cringe. And it's amazing how you can say please, thank you in, in public to other people. But when home, Mm-hmm. When you're home, me, me, this. Where's the please? Where's the thank you? So I encourage our audience, hang in there, hold on. Let that man, let that woman be your, what would you say uh, Lawrence is to you? Your bishop, um, your husband is, what does he call you at home? He calls me T. I know it's another, um, uh, I never, never mind. I'm not going to ask you what that, no. Uh, (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) I'm not. Bring us in, Takira. Bring us in. Bring us in, Takira. Thank you so much for your boldness. Thank you for being transparent. You'd be surprised how many uh, individuals you have helped just by sharing what you shared. Yes, I I want to say thank you so much for coming on our broadcast and being so transparent and real because I mean I learned something today and I'm not a pastor nor my wife, you know, yet. So um, but I just went and I didn't think that you said yet. Well, yeah, I'm not a wife yet. Like (laughs) (laughs) it's coming. It's um, coming. (laughs) But um And I didn't think I would have like a whole bunch to say. So I do have a couple of points that I wrote down. I just want to point out to reiterate to people because um, especially for those who are not uh, pastors or, you know, set gifts of a house, it's always good to to see someone like yourself who is in a position where you have to lead people and to realize you are a human being, but, Mm -hmm. you know, but you're still doing God's work. And like, you know, you still have to respect that. So uh, a couple of words I wrote down um, of why my opinion of why I think this just whole thing works is number one, (laughs) your obedience to God. You know, Mm -hmm. when you say yes to him and the calling that's on your life, everything will align. And then you having a spouse who is, you know, 
equally yoked with you and he's with that unit that's when you don't have to worry about to me you don't have to worry about you know the com the combative spirit of you know I don't know if I like, like this or not, because the egos of both of you are taken out of it. And you both know, you both know this is not about you. It's about him. So I think that's the biggest reason of why it works. But also you have respect for each other, respect mm -hmm. for each other and respect mm -hmm. for God's order of how he, he aligned things to be. And then of course, as Archbishop always says, he gives you grace for your assignment. So mm -hmm. I just feel, I just want to say thank you for coming. I just feel like those key things, that obedience, that respect, and then having that relationship with God and realizing that it's not about you, you know, but you are a vessel being used by him just makes your assignment so much easier than it could be for, you don't have to have the flyer lies, as you said, you know, post it on <laughs> Facebook and Instagram. So mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you so much for, for your wisdom that you shared with us today and your realness. And I just, I really enjoyed you. God bless you. I love to hear. I love to hear Takira's uh, comments because she comes from a whole different generation as well as a whole different perspective. I mean, like she said, she's not a pastor nor she a wife, but there are comments that can be made because there's she has her own thoughts, and just as much as she has her own thoughts, there are thousands that she represent in giving those yeah. thoughts. So yeah. I uh, I appreciate uh, those comments. So. We are going to leave you for today. Anything else? Anything else you want to share before we go? Did anything else come to mind? I see that the preacher part kind of calmed down. I had to pull her back in because she was coming out. The preacher was coming out. <laughs> but you know, I just want to encourage people to let God be God. Let Holy Spirit do his work. We cannot do the work of the word. We cannot make the word work. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to do his work in us. Then he that's begun a good work will perform it. Just be, be encouraged, saints. Let God be God. He will perform it. So yeah. those that want to be a pastor. I hope you're called. Uh, did you see all three of our faces? Did you see all three of our faces? Ooh, one person that, used to listen to this. One person used to say, with pastoring, either God called you or the devil done tricked you on a hard work. <laughs> wow. On a hard work. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you, please. Pray for senior pastors, yes. not just your pastor, but please pray. I'm serious. Sincerely pray for sen uh, senior pastors and their spouse and yes. their family. They have mm -hmm. a whole, whole lot to deal with. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Until we see you tomorrow, be blessed. God bless you. Teresa, yes. blessings to you. Blessings to you. Thank blessings you, girl. to you. I'm serious. I'm so serious. Thank you. Thank you so much for being you. I love you. God bless you. And we'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock. All righty.